APC Chief Thames clashed with Governor Autumn over calls for state of emergency in Benway. And as the world marked International Day of Victims of Enforced Disappearances, Nigeria accounts for about 24,000 missing persons in Africa. Well, this is Cross Politics, a Diane Mary Anico. Influential members of the Benue State Chapter of the All Progressive Congress, APC, have weighed in on the security situation in the state and have asked Mr. President to immediately take steps to declare a state of emergency. Meanwhile, elder statesman Wanteg Paul Unongo has cautioned those castigating Governor Samuel Autumn of Benue State for speaking out against the herdsmen attacks in his state and the worsening insecurities in the country to refrain from their actions. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is the Attorney General of Benway State, Michael Gusa. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Well, here we are again, still talking about the ongoing crisis in your state. And there has been seemingly a war of words between your governor and Mr. President's aides, not necessarily the president. And there seems to be a back and forth. And now the APC in your state have joined, uh, you know, in the war of words. But let me just name a couple of them. Uh, um, Akume Ebute, Gamade, and several other members of the APC uh, have called for a state of emergency in your state. Now, you're a legal person, so you'd be able to help me out. Um, following the recent happenings in the state, why do you think that um, this call for a state of emergency shouldn't be? Because they seem to think that this is what they need uh, for the insecurity in your state to happen, uh, to, to be abated, rather. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. And like I said before, uh, I want to say that uh, His Excellency uh, Samuel Otom, uh, who is the governor of Benue State, is not the governor of APC. He's not the governor of PDP or any political party. His Excellency Governor Samuel Otom is the governor of Benue State. And we are all aware of the security challenges that we have been facing here in Benue State and so many other states in Nigeria. And so, you had, here is a situation where you have a state that have about 6 million population, and then about 1.5 million of this, out of this population is in RDP camps because of the series of attacks by the Hez men who have launched uh, this war against the people of Benue State. Come to Benue State, I want to tell you that out of the 23 states and uh, local governments that you have in Benue State, more than 19 local governments have been occupied, as I talked to you, by these headers, by this militia, or by this uh, Fulani headsman. And so, the governor is doing his best to bring peace in Benue State. And anything anybody from Benue State can do is to encourage him, is to support him. This is because the governor has not drawn a battle line with the presidency. The governor is somebody that knows the law. The governor is somebody that respects due process and rule of law. The governor is somebody that is very humble. And so trying to change the narratives by calling for the presidency to declare a state of emergency in Benue State is doing politics with the security challenges that the state is facing, is doing politics with what uh, security challenges that the entire country is facing. Because this is not just in Benue State. You hear and you see these killings every day in Niger State, in Plateau State, in uh, Kasena State, uh, in Zamfara State, and all over the uh, country. So it is not just in Benue State. And then for anybody from Benue State to uh, call himself a uh, 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 members of uh, a political party and then call on the presidency to come and declare state of emergency in Benue State. I think it's 
most unfortunate. I'm curious because these people who have called for a state of emergency are, are people who are from your state. Now, what I do not know, and you're going to help me with that, is do those people live in your state? These APC members in your state, I'm talking about Senator Gimade, um, I'm talking about Akume. Um, if these people do live in the state, maybe they see this particular insecurity from a different prism and hence the reason why they're asking for a state of emergency. Uh, and again, I'm asking, do you not think it's necessary? Because the governor has painted a picture as to how bad the situation is. So would a state of emergency not help the situation? Or is it, like you said, just a political way of addressing the issue? Because you have also said, sir, that your governor is trying to, f to bring peace to the state. But if there is much more insecurity in your, in your state, then peace cannot really reign, can it? Well, that is why uh, His Excellency will continue to raise these security issues with the presidency. It is not just in Benue State. But you know that what the governor who, who has uh, immunity can say to the president, uh, myself and any other person cannot say it because His Excellency the governor is governing Benue State. And you know that Benue State is one of the uh, federating units in Nigeria uh, project. And so uh, he superintends uh, Benue State, you know, and we look, uh, he, he is supposed to be the eyes of the presidency. And so if there's anything that is happening here in Benue State, His Excellency, who is also the chief security officer of the state, is in a, be in a better position to inform the presidency. And all the issues that he has been raising are, concern, are concerning security. And for anybody to say that the governor is insulting the president, the governor is doing this, the governor has done this, let the president come out and uh, establish what he has said. I want to tell you that uh, his Excellency has always told us, those of us who are working with him, and the entire people of Benue State, that he has tremendous respect for the presidency. And these are the issues that the, 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 this group of people are calling for state of emergency in Benue State. Hmm. Are these things uh, only happening in Benue State here? The security challenges are all over the place. Look at what has happened in the North uh, East over a period of time. But here in Benue State, His Excellency is doing his best to see to the to 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 it that the citizens of Benue State uh, are, are living in peace, and that is why. Uh, the, the, the issue of uh, the law that forbids open grazing uh, came about. This is because he was looking for a situation whereby he will create an enabling environment for both the headers and the farmers in Benue State to live together. But that doesn't seem so to be this, working, is this, it? I mean, you always make reference are, to that. I, I, please don't get me wrong. I'm not in any way trying to query if, you know, the, the governor did the right thing or not. But I'm saying if you have tried something... And, and it hasn't necessarily worked. Shouldn't other op options be explored? Again, and that's why I asked that question, that these people who are asking for a state of emergency, could they be seeing something else that your government isn't seeing? The option cannot be that of declaration of state of emergency in Benue State, because the entire country is facing these security challenges. And I think what the, the, the presidency can do is to change the security architecture or in, in, in the whole country, not just in Benue State. In, 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 in now coming out to call on the presidency to declare a state of emergency in Benue State by this group of people who are not even resident in Benue State. They did that uh, press conference in Abuja. Let them come back home and be in touch with the people. Let them come back home and see what the governor is doing. Let them come back home and see what is happening in Benue State. Not for them to stay in Abuja and do a press conference. Here in Benue State, the stakeholders have come together and they have given their, their support to what the efforts that the governor is doing. And that is why the governor is crying on a daily basis that the presidency should also do more to, to, to complement what he is doing here in Benue State. Um, Mr. Gusa, I have spoken with several um, security op experts, um, you know, on the same issue uh, in Benue State. And, and they're saying that the responsibility of dealing with crime, criminality and security uh, in states lies solely uh, on the shoulders of the governor of the states. And, and 
we also know that the gov your governor has continuously called on Mr. President to wade into the matter. But if your governor's responsibility is to douse, you know, the problem, and you've said, you know, he's tried to bring peace with the anti-grazing bill uh, and all of that, like I said, um, if all of those things he has tried isn't working, shouldn't he be trying other options, especially if he <coughs> has the power as the chief security officer of the state? Why should the president be doing his job for him? Well, I, th I think the, the issue of uh, uh, saying the governor is the chief security of uh, the state is even in court because he is not the commander in chief. He doesn't have control over the police. He does not have control over the, 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 the military. He doesn't have control over the security agents. Does he have to have agency. control over them for, for them to be able to, these security operatives operate within that sovereign state, which is Benue State? Their duty, of course, the reason why they're dispatched to that state is to handle the security apparatus in that state. Whether the governor has powers over them or not, it's their responsibility not to work or partner with the government of the day to deal with insecurity. Why does the governor need any form of power over the security apparatus for them to work? Well, that is why I say the governor, as far as Benue State is concerned, he's doing his best to ensure that there is peace in Benue State. And he is working in harmony with all the security agencies in the state. But like I said, being a governor and uh, being called the security chief of the state does not make you the commander in chief of the armed forces. And so wherever he has uh, some difficulties or wherever uh, he has his own limitations, I think nothing stops him from calling upon the presidency to intervene or to assist, maybe by sending more troops to the state, because this... IDPs who are in, uh, uh, in camp cannot remain in these camps. These people are entitled to go back to their ancestral homes and continue with their farming activities. And if these people should, will continue to live in IDP camps, I don't think that is what uh, uh, the governor came to, to do. He's here not to superintend over dead bodies. He's here not to superintend over IDP camps. But he is here to ensure that there is peace in the state. And that is where... Uh, anytime there are these problems, there are these challenges, there are these issues, he will always call upon the presidency because he's looking up to the president, who is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces in Nigeria. Now, these same highly placed members of the APC had choice words for the governor. But something that jumped out for everyone is the fact that they were asking um, that the president stops verbally abusing or attacking Mr. President. And that they've also... Uh, said that the governor is on his own in terms of attacking the president, that he's on his own. What do you specifically think they meant by that when they said the governor is now on his own? Uh, plus, why, why, why has your principal um, resorted to verbal attacks, if there be any? Uh, has he exhausted all normal avenues to get Mr. President's attention? Well, I don't think uh, there's any attack that is coming from His Excellency, the governor of Benue State, against the presidency. I know as a fact that His Excellency, apart from uh, raising these alarms, he has also written a series of letters to the presidency, alerting the presidency on the security challenges in the state. They, these people, this group of persons who now did that press conference yesterday, are only, just like I said before, they are only inciting the presidency against the governor of Benue State. And I want to say, because I know as a fact that the governor cannot insult the president. He has never insulted the president. Raising this alarm does not, you know, become insults against the presidency. They are only trying to say, oh, they are only trying to draw a line between the, the presidency and the governor. And I know that the governor knows more than that. He can never, he will not insult the president. He has never insulted the president. My question again to this is, these Members of the APC, of course, like you said, the governor is not the governor of just one political party. It's the governor of Benue State. Um, how have members of the opposition helped in dealing with this issue? Has there been a, a, hand, a handshake across the table in dealing with this issue? Because all and sundry um, have to be affected. Whether they are, I mean, when the bandits come, they do not ask what political party you belong to. So, I mean, it could affect anybody, whether they be friends and family members of those who are in the different political parties. So. Has there been some form of synergy, hand cross, a handshake across the table, a coming together of all political leaders and representatives in the state to 
um, dialogue on how to deal with this issue? Has there been any such thing? Well, it is unfortunate that uh, somebody who was two uh, times the governor of Benue State, somebody who was a senator who was elected by these good people for three times to represent them in the Senate, uh, will now want to destroy uh, the democracy that gave him those opportunities. These are the same people that voted for him, and these are the same people that are languishing in IDP camps now. He has never for once taken his time to visit these IDP camps to see what these people are going through. And then for him to lead others, to go to Abuja and then do a press conference, calling on the presidency to come and declare state of emergency in Benue State, I think is most unfortunate. But you haven't answered my question. Has there been an, a reach out from your government to those in the opposition, which might be a very difficult thing to do, but then when you're dealing open. with insecurity, shouldn't that be the case? It is very open. Even yesterday, we had state uh, stakeholders meeting here in Benue State. And the invitation was extended to all the political parties, the traditional rulers, all the stakeholders in the state here. And then they chose to stay away from the stakeholders meeting that was ahead to extract the issues, to extract the problems that Benue people are facing. They chose to go and... Uh, 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 have the uh, he not even once, not even twice, not even thrice. You know, he is somebody who is, who is operating an open door policy, and then his government is open to all. That is why I started by saying that His Excellency Governor of Tom is not Governor of PDP or Governor of APC or any other political party. He is the Governor of Benue State, and he keeps challenging Benue indigenous that if anybody has any superior argument on any issue that can add value to what he's doing in Benue State. That should be brought on the table so that uh, it will be discussed and agreed upon. Okay. Now, um, let's talk about the the job of Mr. President in dealing with this issue because uh, I've seen your governor call on the presidency many times. Um, we all know that the president is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. We also know that when it comes to security formations and chiefs uh, across states, um, the box stops at Mr. President's table because he commands these service chiefs. Um, but why do you think that the presidency seems to be very mute on this issue of Benue? Or is it that the presidency is doing what it can to deal with the situation, but then maybe your, your governor doesn't see, see it as an enough, uh, good enough move by the presidency? What exactly is the challenge? Well, I, I, I really cannot say, but like I've been saying, uh, His Excellency uh, is the governor of Benue State, and uh, he's in charge as far as Benue State is concerned. And if there are issues that are beyond him, he can always call on the presidency. He can always inform the presidency. He can always allow the presidency. Look at uh, the issues that I'm facing here in my own state. If there's anything that can be done to assist if there's anything that can be done to complement what the governor is doing, I think that is what should be done. So, so what but exactly here, does the governor, Governor Autumn, want the president to do in the case of Benway? I want to be, for example, I'm the president now and I'm listening to you and you have finally gotten my attention. What do you want? Well, for, 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 for instance, if uh, the number of security men that have been deployed to Benway State uh, are overstretched, it is for the presidency to also direct that there should be more security men to be, that should be sent to Benue State to complement what the, the, the troops that were already deployed are doing in the state. I think that is what the governor is saying. He said that these killings are too many. And so these security men who are working here with me are overstretched. And so there is need to do more. I think this is just what the governor is saying. And then for isn't, anybody isn't to that supposed to be directed to the chief of army staff? Is that not supposed to be the uh, his attention should not should that not be drawn to his attention instead of Mr. President? I mean, sh the president no, is not he, in charge. Of, he is not the, he, the president not the is not in charge of dispatching men and personnel of the he, army to Benway State. Can direct, should that he, not he be direct. the chief of army staff's duty? Are we not giving the, assigning roles that are not supposed to be that of Mr. President to the president? The president, because he's the commander-in-chief, so the president can direct. 
I still don't get it. If I am, if I am the IGP uh, uh, and, and you're, you're saying, you're complaining that there are not enough men in my state, should that complaint not be directed at me instead of Mr. President? I'm the one who gives the orders for these men to be dispatched. It's not the president's job. As, 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 and I'm not in any way trying to you know, hold brief for the president. I'm not a spokesperson of the president, but I'm just trying to make sense of it all. Shouldn't this be channeled to the authorities that are in charge of these men? And then if that, if, if nothing is done, and then they direct you to Mr. President, then you now go to the president with this particular complaint. That, 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 is, what, that is what I always said before, that when this uh, crisis, when these killings, and when these uh, problems started, uh, a series of letters were written by His Excellency, the governor, to the presidency. He wrote these letters to... Uh, DG uh, SS, he wrote these letters to Inspector General of Police, he wrote it to the Chief of Army Staff. Now, all this why not, 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 nothing happened. But I want to say that this is what even led to uh, the deployment of uh, Operation War Stroke here in Benway State. But what I'm saying is that uh, they are doing their best, but you discover that these problems are still on. Just like in any other state, not just in Benway State here. You are aware of the killings in other states. And so the governor is saying that, well, you have sent your security men here who are working with me, we are collaborating with them, we are working together, but they are overstretched. So can we have a more of this, uh, a more, more of these security men so that they can complement what these ones that are already on ground are doing in Benway State? That is just what the governor is saying. Um, you know how they say that, again, I'm not speaking for the presidency, how, you know, you can have local solutions for local problems. Um, you talked about stakeholder meetings that you have had, your government has had with stakeholders in the state. Um, I, and I'm, I want to believe that you have security experts working with the presidency and, and the chief, you know, um, security uh, protocol officers in your state would come up with ideas. But... There always is a genesis uh, to problems. Like, for, for example, in Zamfara, they have a local problem that escalated to what we have today. Uh, and I'm guessing that in Benway, there has to be a teething problem that needs to be fixed locally that might reduce this situation one way or the other. It might not win the war, but could it at least give you some form of respite? Well, like uh, in Benway State here, when His Excellency came in 2015, he discovered that the, the, the problems were between the headers and the crop farmers in the state. And that, that is what gave rise to the, 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 the law of forbidding open grazing because uh, the, the consensus was that it is because there is no restriction of movement by these livestock who are destroying uh, crops in the farm that you know, gave rise to a series of killings in the state. Uh, he now uh, sent these uh, proposals by way of executive bill to the Benway State House of Assembly, who now conducted public hearing and eventually uh, signed his intent to this uh, into a law. Even when this law was passed by the Benway State House of Assembly and assented to by His Excellency, like I said, he still gave a window period of about six months for people of Benway State to, 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 to adopt to the provisions of this law. And uh, we are looking at it as a recipe. We are looking at it as a panacea for peace in the state here. But the, 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 the headers insisted that they will not respect the law. They insisted that this law should not be implemented in, in the state here. And that is why they, 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 they came out to say that if that law is not abolished, if that law uh, is not reviewed, they will continue to kill the people of Benue State. And that has, is what there is been a, has, the, has this law been enforced? Is there, because if there is some form of enforcement, then these people who are saying that they will continue to kill would be apprehended. But is there some form of enforcement? Because if you're caught openly grazing, then there has to be penalties. If there's not opening, open grazing, you would not have more and more people migrating into farms or causing trouble. So really, again, the bulk is at the table of your governor and the security in your state, the security op operatives in your state. How well have you been able to um, enforce this law on open grazing? Again, 
I hear, uh, according to the people who had a press conference yesterday, members of the APC, that um, your governor needs to be probed by the EFCC. Um, and they're asking that certain amounts of monies be accounted for. Is that the other bone of contention? Because this seems more political to me than the issue that's at hand. Uh, that is what I keep saying, that for anybody to play politics with the lives of the people of Benue State is most unfortunate. But I want to say that uh, we are... But do you not think that your government is also playing a part in that politicizing of the situation in your state? No, how? Because we are here, we are looking at, we are seeing what is happening here. We have first-hand information about what is happening here in the state. And that is why whenever this happens, the governor will always raise alarm. The governor will also will always raise it so that let the presidency know. But what I was going to say is that we have been implementing this law. And I want to say that more than 200 people have so far have been tried and convicted. It is not just uh, 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 forbidding, I mean, the law is not just forbidding open grazing in the state. The law is also against cattle rustling. And so, so many people have been convicted who rustle cattle or livestock in the state here. So many have been convicted. Some are still standing trial uh, in, in, in several courts in Benue State here. And so, for anybody to uh, come out and make spurious allegations against the governor that uh, he has embezzled so much money, well, it is left for him to come and prove. But for those of us who are here in the state, we know that the governor is being prudent with the management of resources, which is very meager at his disposal. Facing in the face of all the security challenges. And so it is left for them to prove. Okay. Michael Gusa is the um, Attorney General in Benue State, and he's been our guest this evening. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you very much for having me. I all appreciate it. Right. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, we have a conversation on the issues of missing persons in Africa, and most especially in Nigeria. Stay with us.